kill. There he is, right there. <laughs> awesome. There's a warthog that's just run, but he's got a kill. He's, he's plucked something for sure. So that's how I spotted him. If you look down below, there is definitely something that has been plucked. Now he's chasing a warthog. A warthog just ran out from here, and he's going to try and chase it. So there we go. You see the, all the fur? you on a kill. You can't go chasing warthogs, and that warthog is far too big for you. Hello, little Tumba. <laughs> You prancing cat, where are you off to? You can't chase that warthog, he's too big for you. It's not stopping him, as you can see. Our young boy is on a mission. He's now trotting like a pony in a show horse. Almost as if to say, I'm here. I'm going to show you all that I'm around. Senzo, high five, buddy. So there we go. Another leopard in the bag, which is awesome. <laughs> I'm super stoked about this. Now I'm going to try and go around just so I can see where the warthog's gone. The warthog came flying out of a little burrow right here. So right where I'm parked on my left hand side is a little burrow and he went running out of there. And there's Tumba's tracks all over this place. So I wonder if Tumba hasn't been stalking this warthog for quite some time over the last few days and is kind of keeps getting his hopes up. Now the warthog is right here, it's just trotting you can see in front of me, so there it goes down towards the Mulawati. Now Tumba is just on my right hand side watching this warthog going around. I think the warthog knows there's something here because the warthog was staring directly where Tumba was standing. So I think this warthog is pretty sure that there is some sort of threat. It's also with our vehicle, they kind of know something's up. But let's go around, I think Tumba might make his way back to that carcass. Where are you, little boy? You are somewhere on this side. Rebecca, you say Tumba wants bacon for breakfast. Well, yes. Who doesn't like a bit of bacon for breakfast? Everybody likes bacon for breakfast. There he is. So he's there. The warthog is there. And he's licking his chops and watching. And you have had something to eat. What did you eat? I want to know what it is as well. I'm going to go back. I'm sure he'll go back to those fur or feathers or whatever it is down there. It looked like fur and I think maybe a little diker is what my kind of feeling is. Or a scrub hair. He doesn't look very full, but definitely had some sort of meal. And you can see now he's not really interested in that warthog. The warthog's drifted a little far from where he is. And so I think he's going to let the warthog go. The, I see the warthog is now starting to go down towards the Mulawati. And well, little Tumba is now starting to groom himself. So let me go forward for you, Senzo, so that you can see better than what you're seeing currently. There we go. So you can see a bit of grooming happening, which is very common after a leopard has a kill. They will groom themselves. They are quite meticulous cats. They like to make sure that they are nicely clean and groomed and Look at the size of his front paws. His paws are so big. When you find these tracks, that's the other thing about him, is that his tracks are slightly bigger than Hosanna's already. So that's why I was saying it. I'm sure it is him. But now that we can see him, it is most definitely Tumba. Women, you say you look so healthy. You're so glad to see. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? That our two young boys and even, you know, Shongile, the three of them, are, and he seems to have been left quite early as well by Tandi. It seems as though she's not coming back for him at this stage. We haven't had any sign of Tandi. There's been no tracks coming back to this area looking for him. And so it's amazing how these three young leopards have really done quite well. I know we haven't seen Shongile in a while, and I know it's everyone's a little worried about her but i'm sure she's just flying low and is just taking it easy but the two boys have been absolutely phenomenally good in looking after themselves they both are looking healthy big and and really well fed and so it seems as though they're finding their way in life fairly well which is great news for us and you can see why he's tough to find here look at that camouflage now that he sits down he's really in plain sight but well there he is he's just sitting around right there and we we're able to kind of find him so it's difficult when you're driving around here and, you, and you're and not really sure where he is or even walking because you'll walk right into a leopard like that without even knowing. But I'm going to reposition for you, Senzo, because I know it's not easy with all this grass in his face. There is a little track that goes in here so we can just quickly go through. We won't hit any branches, which means we shouldn't scare little Tumba in any way whatsoever. Of course, he also just ran right past the car. He's not really too faced by uh, us at all so if we just go in here and we should give him more than enough space we'll be able to see him really nicely hello boy it's good to see you you've been giving us the run around this week <laughs> maybe he heard me say that he needs to perform he 
almost heard us say that Hassan is outdoing him and he's like, you watch this. I'm going to come prancing out like a show pony and show all of you just how much I can do as well. So <laughs> maybe he's slightly jealous about Hassan's bravery and Hassan's hunting prowess over the last few days. And so he's decided to show himself as well. Now I believe a lot of you are super happy that we're seeing Tumba and that our cat streak is continuing. Well, yes, I think we can officially say this is a better cat streak or cat sort of notch in the belt for our cat streak than what the Birmingham's were because the Birmingham's were almost not visible. David, you say my leopard instinct is amazing. David, not really. I, it's just a pattern that's developed with Tumba in this particular section and half of what we do out here is just recognizing that there is some sort of a pattern going on and that there is an area that they like to inhabit and so it's part of the reason why I came down here is for the hope that he would be around Nyala Road South or the Spaghetti Junction area which he's been for the last few days or weeks should I say and so it's it's just recognizing that he's been around it's not really an instinct it's it's more just a kind of he's spent time in this area and so why not give it a shot once we find the tracks and those tracks were quite fresh it was fairly easy from there we just followed the tracks pretty much straight to where we ended up finding him so it's it's just one of those things like i say it's, there's a bit of element of luck in it i mean there's been how many days that i've driven around here where there's been tumbers tracks and i haven't found him it's been quite a few lately so you know it's it's sometimes takes a bit of a time and our success rate is almost like the success rate of a leopard hunting you know it's, if i think about the amount of times i've tracked tumbers since i've been back from leave and how many times i've found him it's probably not a very high percentage at all it's just that we've been lucky with other leopards that have given us a chance to kind of go to them while we haven't had success with him so you know at the end of the day it's it's more just a pattern that's developed lately and and it's just noticing those things and and the really good trackers that i've worked with that's how they work is that They'll sometimes even leave tracks that are going in a certain direction and they walk straight to a place that they think that leopard's going to go and generally they're right and that's the really good ones. So they've worked out how this cat likes to move and they, because they track them so often they, they understand their movements and understand what they're looking for and what they want and that's how they head into these areas. Now of course I need to radio this in at some point because other guys were quite interested and were trying to listen to me and, and, and understand what's going on so I just need to let them know. Uh, Rex, Rex. We've located Tumba, if you're interested, he's static here, um, just on the east, uh, western side of Spaghetti Junction. He, does, he did have a bumper, but I think it's finished now, um, but I'll keep you updated. So, there we go, we just need to let those guys know. So, the thing is, is that there's quite a few guys that are looking for leopard this morning. Obviously, the lions took preference to start because it's the four Birmingham's together, but... Now that we've found little Tumba, the guys I'm sure will start coming this way. And also, it's just to clear our conscience. We don't want anybody to bump into us while we're with the leopard and to think that we're hiding things from them. At the end of the day, we all help each other and we all make sure that we are trying to kind of give everyone the right updates. Now, while little Tumba grooms his feet and looks after himself, let's go across to Brent Leo Smith, who's with his binoculars again. <laughs> 